In this video, we're going to talk about a 2D array and its power to store data in a tabular form. If this is the first time that you hear about an array, I recommend that you go and watch my previous videos where I talked about a 1D array. In those videos, I touch on what is an array, how to create an array, what are some special features such as increasing and decreasing the size throughout the program. But in this video, I'm going to focus on a 2D array. So what is a 2D array? 2D array is also an array, right? So it's a data structure that can store many pieces of information or pieces of data within one array. But the special thing or the more complex feature of a 2D array is that it can store data that are arrays. A 2D array is one big array that stores many 1D arrays inside. And within the inner arrays or these 1D arrays, you can store data just like what you can store in a regular 1D array. In order for us to access values within a 2D array, you need not only one, but two index numbers. The first index number is the index of the inner array, and the second index number is the index number of the position that that value is being stored inside the inner array. So I'm gonna create a 2D array. of the size three. And then I'm gonna give it some numbers. So as you can see here, the sizes of the inner array do not have to be the same, right? So let's try to print this. So it says here, Hey, this 2D array has a size of three because we have three 1D arrays. But within each of these 1D arrays, it has a size of three, size of one, and size of four. So if you look inside here, you can see that each of the value has two index numbers within the first 1D array of index zero. This first one here, it has three values. And these three values are 24, 305, and the index locations are 0, 1, and 2. And the second 1D array is at the index value of 1. It only has one piece of information at the index of 0. And then the last piece of 1D array here is at index 2 with four values here, ranging from index 0 to index 3. So if we want to access the value 393, we would need two index locations, right? And what are those? It would be two, right, of the inner array here and zero. So all we have to do is that we have to write the name of that array and then two square brackets. And then you put the first index value, which is two, and then the second index value, which is zero. And you get number 393. Let's do another one. What if we want the value 300 here? It is at the index 0 of the first array, right? The inner array. And then it is at location index 1 within that array. Then you get the number 300. So right now you might be questioning, hey Pat, this is quite complicated. Why would we do it this way? Can we just use like a 1D array? Because we only have how many? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of data. That is a great question. But the reason you're asking this is because you haven't seen the power of a 2D array yet. 2D arrays are commonly used to store data within a table with a specific number of rows and columns. For example, right, in our canvas, we have a specific number of pixels that are in number of columns and number of rows. Each of the pixels has its own X and Y location, right? So in order for us to store and access that data, we need to know that pixels X and Y location. And we can do that very easily within a 2D array because the way that we would store that information is already in the index one and index two location, which could be X and Y location of a pixel. So let's see how we would create that type of 2D arrays that can store this kind of information easily. So right now what I have here is that I have 25 circles. And the way that I drew out this 25 circles is by using a nested for loop with a specific number of columns and a specific number of rows. You can see that I set the size of these circles at size equals to 30. But now 
instead of setting all the sizes of each of the circles to be the same at 30 pixel. What I want to do is that I want to create a 2D array called sizes. And this 2D array is going to store each of the circles sizes and they can be different sizes. And the way that I would want to access the information is that I would like to give it an X and Y location, which is I and J, right? Where the column is and where the row is of that circle. I'm just showing you now how I would like to access the information, but we have not created this sizes to the array yet. So let's go and look at how we would create that. First, we need to declare the array. To declare a 2D array, we cannot just do sizes equals to two square brackets. It doesn't work in JavaScript. So what we need to do is that we just do one square bracket like this, just like a regular array. And then within the setup function, you need to write a for loop. And this for loop would go from zero to i less than columns, right? Right now, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to create empty arrays, empty inner arrays or 1D arrays within this big 2D outer array. So what we want to say that sizes at position i equals to an empty array. So let's print sizes. Oh, the reason is because um, this thing does not exist yet. So let's comment it out. Okay. Now you can see that sizes to the array has a size of five, but within each of these inner array, they're empty because we haven't put any information inside. And then what we need to do is that we need to create another for loop, right? A nested for loop. And we're gonna loop through zero to J less than rows, right? And then this is where you would give a value of the sizes of each of the circles that you want. And you can do that by telling it at sizes of index i, which is the column, and j, which is the row, or x and y, I'm going to give it a value. And this is where I'm going to introduce you to a random function. And a random function needs two arguments. I'm going to put at 20 to 50. So right now, the random function will give a value between 20 and 50, but not including 50. So let me just print this. You can see that now, Sizes to the array have a size of five, but each of the inner array also has a size of five, right? Because we have five columns and five rows. Then if you look into here, you can see that each of the values is ranging between 20 and 50, but not including 50. Right? And now we can uncomment this line of code and then run. And there you go. Now you can see that each of the circles, right? Zero, zero is this one at the size of 45.3. And then this is zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, and zero, four, right? It's 45, 25, 46, 41, 42, and so on. So now you can store the size of each of the circle within a 2D array, and you can access that information by just giving it the X and Y location or the column and row location of each of the circles. This is just one example for you to store data inside a table, but actually you will encounter so many more of these type of examples when you create games with a specific number of rows and columns. Let's say like you wanna make a game of snake and you wanna store data of you know, where the food is within that table, you can use a 2D array. So instead of just storing data that has to do with sizes, why don't you give it a try and try to store data that let's say has to do with colors?